we're not supposed to be doing that. Sorry about this one, guys. <laughs> Alan regards my three-star review of this book as a betrayal. This book was terrible, from every perspective. Hey guys, it's Liana, and I'm here today with my <laughs> July wrap-up. So I read um, everything on my TBR and then some. There's an asterisk to that because I swapped something out, but so it ends up being the same number. But I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen books. I did the thing. So we're gonna talk about the thing. The things. Plural. Oh god. Oh no. 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 Oh god. Cool. So, first book that I read in July was Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Because me and my friend Heather uh, are reading the Hogarth Shakespeare books. That is to say, like, we're reading the play and the Hogarth retelling the play and the Hogarth retelling for all of the ones that there are. In June we did Hagseed and The Tempest, and in July we did Macbeth and Macbeth. And the live show where we talked about all four together, we meant to do them separately, but we because of time and scheduling, we did them together. So the live show where we talked about all four, the play and the retelling, the play and the retelling is on my channel. You can watch the replay. We will be doing the next ones like individually. We won't be grouping them like that. But anyway, so I'd read Macbeth before, um, but it was fun revisiting it. And yeah, I mean, it's Shakespeare. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we talked a lot about the play as well as why the retelling of Macbeth was a failure. <laughs> Uh, in the live show. But so, I mean, I love Shakespeare, so I had a good time revisiting a play. It, Macbeth is not my favorite Shakespeare play by any stretch, um, but it's it's solid. <laughs> it's, it's a good one and a classic for a reason. So yeah, it was nice visiting it again. The next book that I read was Dark Age. In my wrap-up for June, I was like, I'm doing this early and I have the rest of the month left to read Dark Age, so I'm just gonna film this now. Well, I didn't finish Dark Age. I didn't really even, I mean, I I kind of sort of started Dark Age in June, but I'd read like 50 pages. So I predominantly read Dark Age in July, which was not on the schedule. It was not planned. We were not supposed to be doing that. So, but I had to do it for the live show on Ellen's channel for their Feb Rising, Red Rising read along. Oh, uh, the replay for that is on Ellen's channel. Oh, uh, we had a great time. It's very spoilery. So if you haven't read Dark Age, well, read Dark Age, but also don't watch it if you haven't read Dark Age. <laughs> I had a great time rereading this. I love me some Red Rising. Love Dark Age the best out of all of them. Well, I mean, I do love Golden Sun. Dark Age is the best written though. I stand by that. In any case, uh, yeah, so. I meant to read this in June, but I ended up reading this whole goddamn book in July, a month in which I did not have time that was spare. Next up, I read the book that my patrons picked for me to read and review for them, and that is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. I was grateful to have a short book to read and review for them. So I won't be posting a review on my channel here because I did it for my patrons, but I did briefly, t uh, I. I found it interesting as a piece of genre fiction history. As a reading experience, like for funsies, I can't say that this is a favorite, but I enjoyed experiencing something that is, has been influential in like horror and speculative fiction. So from that as a student of the genre, I found it interesting to read, but I, I didn't super duper have fun <laughs> reading it, but it was short and I appreciated that. Uh, next up I read The Gunslinger by Stephen King, the first book in the Dark Tower series. I have buddy read this with Bethany and she and I, if you've watched my TBR video, you know that she and I are also buddy reading the next book because we liked this well enough or found it promising enough to go on with the series and everyone is told, definitely me and I think her as well, that like, oh the gunslinger is terrible but just go on. It's the worst of the bunch but just like don't judge the series by that one. Um, and I think I liked The Gunslinger better than Bethany did, but both of us were prepared to loathe and despise it. Stephen King himself is like, sorry about this one, guys. <laughs> Whoops. So with all of that going into it, expecting it to be just like a shit show, um, I actually quite enjoyed it. Not a favorite. I gave it three stars. Um, but I was like, that's that wasn't all that bad. That was like, pretty good. It, it was, it had problems. It wasn't a perfect book by any stretch. It's a bit dated, but like, it was fine. <laughs> I even go so far as to say I had a pretty good time. So anyway, um, yeah, I it's certainly an intriguing beginning to the Dark Tower series. And if everyone is, I'm a little worried that if everyone said loathe and despise the gunslinger, but then you'll love the rest. So since I didn't loathe and despise the gunslinger, I'm concerned that 
maybe I won't like the rest. I'll just have the entirely opposite reaction that I'm supposed to have because that would be just like me, wouldn't it? <laughs> Next up I read Macbeth by Joan Esbo. This is the Hogarth retelling of Macbeth and it is fucking long. All the other Hogarth retellings are short because Shakespeare plays are short. So I mean, yes, you could go into it a bit, but this was terrible. <laughs> Heather and I hated this so much. We went in depth into why we hated this so much in our live discussion. Uh, like we did talk about The Tempest and Hagseed. Uh, I don't want to make it sound like we didn't, but we did spend a great deal of time ranting about this book in that live. So if you're running out of rants to watch, there's plenty of ranting about Macbeth in that live. Briefly, it's too long and I neither of us thinks that Joe Nesbo has any understanding, like even a surface level understanding of the play Macbeth. So it was a pretty big what the fuck. <laughs> the next book that I read was The Howling Dark by Christopher Rocchio. This is the second book in the Sun Eater series. I buddy read this with Alex from Alex Nieves and the live show chat for it is on Alex's channel. Um, the chat for the third one will be back to my channel. So if you want to watch the replay for that, that is available on Alex's channel. Everyone told me and Alex that the first book, Empire of Silence, is like the weak one. <laughs> and they only get both better and crazier from there. I don't know if I can say that I like this better than Empire of Silence, but it is certainly crazier than Empire of Silence. I mean, I, I'm not making it sound like I, I don't want you to think that I disliked this, but I think Empire of Silence is better. I don't think this is better than Empire of Silence. I think they're about equal in quality, um, but this is definitely more bananas. <laughs> This one definitely is, is, is kind of like how I try to explain in a non-spoiler way Dark Age in Red Rising where I'm like, this book is just like, it's, it's very strange. And there's just a lot of like, what? Huh? <laughs> Didn't know that was an option. <laughs> so yeah, there's, it's, it's, uh, it's intense and it, it answers few questions and leaves you with many more. And I'm, and we, you know, are both ex super excited to read the third book um, because we're told that that one's even more bonkers. So buckle up. <laughs> but yeah, this series so far has been absolutely tip top. Uh, favorite for the year for sure. Highly recommend. Empire of Silence, Knockout. Howling Dark continues to be a knockout. And I fully expect the Demon in White to be a knockout. So nothing but great things to say about this. Again, the live, the live show where we talked about it um, in some at some length is available for your viewing at your leisure. <laughs> but yeah, five out of five, no questions, so good. Next up um, is The Shadow of Summer. I have the bind up edition that is The Shadow of Summer and Betrayal in Winter. This is the bind up of the first two, but I read the first book in The Long Price Quartet by Daniel Abraham. And I read this because Alan made me. <laughs> he and I are still going to do chats on each other's channels about the books that we picked for one another. and. That being the case, I am not going to go in depth and talk about how I feel about these books here, uh, cause we're gonna do that together. <laughs> if you want to follow me on Goodreads, which apparently everybody who <laughs> is subscribed to Alan follows me on Goodreads and then reports back to him when I finish a book that he loves. <laughs> I give this two stars. Um, it, it was not a win for me. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> I'll talk to Alan about why, by which I mean I will endure him yelling at me and try to get a word in to explain why I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, this this was not not for me, and I will not be continuing with this series, so. Next up I read Year One by Nora Roberts on my Kindle, hence my Kindle. And this was the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club pick, so if you want to see the ladies me and the ladies gathered to discuss Year One by Nora Roberts. The live show is on Mara's channel for that. It was actually, it was both the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club pick and it coincided with the conclusion of the Nora Roberts readathon that Mara hosted. And none of us really liked it. <laughs> I think Mara probably liked it the best out of all of us, but that was more because she has previously experienced disliking paranormal works by Nora Roberts. And on that scale, like grading on a curve, year one, it was better than the other paranormal books by Nora Roberts that Mara had read. So comparatively, it was better. But none of us thought it was very good. And <laughs> during the course of that live show, we kind of like identified how it could have been improved. <laughs> and basically, if we had been consulted, it could have been a great book. But as usual, 
No one asked us, and the book suffered. Next up is another book that I read with Mara, and that is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. Uh, I have not filmed, but I plan to film a review for Ship of Magic. So usually in wrap-ups, I have been on the ball and I can be like, I already have a review for this for you to go and watch, but I don't yet, but I will. <laughs> so what I'm saying is like, I'm not gonna say too much here. There's nowhere for you to find me saying anything yet, but there will be. Um, I had a lot of thoughts about this. Um, I, I liked it a lot. I, I loved it. Um, so five out of five stars. Did I give it five stars? Yeah. I didn't, I should have. I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. I'm loving Hob, so like it's it's will not be a rant review. But yeah, it's I it, yeah. Hob is Hob is great. <laughs> and that's why I went ahead to film another review for cause I, I film reviews for books that I have a lot to say about. So um yeah, I, I will talk about this more, but A plus loving live ship. Can't wait to read the mad ship. Next up was another Alan pick, and that was Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. Again, I was ratted out extremely quickly. Alan regards my three-star review of this book as a betrayal. I gave Hogfather, which he did not make me read. I read that on my own Steam. I gave Hogfather five stars, and I showed that to Alan as like an olive branch, and he just said that Hogfather is not two stars better than, than Guards Guards. That was ineffective as a, as a strategy. Guards Guards was fine. That's why I gave it three stars. I don't dislike it. I gave it three stars. I just, I will talk about this or I will try to talk about this when we and Alan talk about the books we picked for each other. I did not hate it. It was fine. Next is another Alan book and that is Sunlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. This one I also gave Three stars, right? I gave it three stars. I think so. Uh, this one was more disappointing to me because unlike Guards Guards, which like, I mean, I'd read Pratchett before and I continue, I would continue to say that I like Pratchett. Pratchett isn't my favorite author, but I love, uh, I really liked Hogfather. I love Good Omens, which he co-wrote with Neil Gaiman and Guards Guards was fine. Um, so like, I didn't go into Guards Guards being like, this is gonna be the best book ever. I was like, oh, it's gonna be a Pratchett Discworld book. Like, this will be a good time. And it was like a fine time. But with Sinlin Ascends, uh, this is, I mean, Josiah Bancroft has only written this series and this is the first book in that series. So I've never previously read anything by Josiah Bancroft. Uh, so I had no expectations based on previous experience, but I had mega expectations just based on everybody who I know who's read it raving about it and people recommending it specifically to me. Just knowing my own taste and the kind of things people had to say about it, it just sounded like this would be a new favorite. And I've owned this book for a long time and the whole time it's been on my shelf, every time I looked at it, I've been like, I need to get around to that for sure five star book. And it, it wasn't a five star, which was surprising to me and therefore disappointing to me. So even though I also give this three stars, it's a more like disappointing three stars to me. And again, I'll talk about why when Ellen and I discuss this, but I it didn't hate it. I just, I definitely didn't love it. Next up I read Trigger Warning by Neil Gaiman. This was the patron buddy read uh, for July. So I chatted with my patrons about it as we read it. This is a collection of short stories. What the fuck? Why is there dirt on this book? Anyway, um, this is my second Neil Gaiman short story collection that I've read. I read, I guess I'm reading them in publication order on accident. Um, the first one I read was Smoke and Mirrors. I read that some time ago. And then now this is my second short story collection. And a few of the short stories in here have been published separately like, um, standalone volumes that are illustrated and I've actually had read some of those so the sleeper and the spindle I have the illustrated version of that and highly recommend the illustrator I mean I recommend any time if possible if Chris Riddell has illustrated a, an edition of Neil Gaiman's work to always get the one that's illustrated by Chris Riddell so Neverwhere he also illustrated that so if possible get the one illustrated by Chris Riddell uh, so sleeper and the spindle is illustrated by Chris Riddell so highly recommend that um, also the truth is a cave in the black mountains I have sung that's praises. That's praises? Can I say it like that? Well, I did. The Truth is a Cave in the Black Mountains is also a picture book. It's not illustrated by Chris Riddell. But the audiobook is read by Neil Gaiman accompanied by a string quartet. It is quite a haunting and incredible experience, which I highly recommend. But yeah, so I was familiar with those two stories. The others were, all the others were new to me. Those were the only two. Well, those are the only two I'd read before. One of them, a few years ago, I went to an evening with Neil Gaiman and he read some stuff aloud. And one of the things he read aloud was a short story from here, which like, as soon as I started reading it here, I was like, oh yeah, I remember. I remember this one and I remember being creeped out by it. <laughs> and I was creeped out by it again. I think I gave it four stars. Um, not every short story in this collection is a win for me. Not every single one was like, 
perfection. A lot of them were like really knockout. Um, some of them were like, okay. Uh, that, I feel like that's the thing with short story collections. Like it's really hard for me to imagine a short story collection that I would give five stars to. Did I give Sharp Pen five stars? <laughs> so I'm just looking at the next short story collection on my wrap up. I don't remember. I don't think so. Cause that's the thing with short story collections. They're usually hit and miss, even the best ones. So yeah, this was like super solid. And as a short story collection, like absolutely great. Um, and it's Neil Gaiman, so. And between this and Smoke and Mirrors, I think I like this better, like overall. Like I think more of this was hits. There's definitely some short stories in Smoke and Mirrors that I think are really, really excellent. But like overall, there were more hits than misses. So like as a whole, this is better as a collection. But definitely read Smoke and Mirrors. There's some excellent short stories in that. Basically just read everything Gaiman's ever written. Okay, bye. So the next book that I read was Sharp Ends, which is a reread. This is the collection of short stories that take place in the world of the first law. In the reading order, which you should be familiar with by now, uh, this is what you should pick up after you've read the trilogy, the first original trilogy, and all of the standalones. Then read Sharp Ends. And definitely, 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 even if you don't read the book, uh, even if you don't like experience the book via audiobook, which I recommend you do because all the audiobooks for First Law are incredible. And Joe Abercrombie reads one of the short stories in Sharp Ends, which is great. Um, but at the end of the audiobook, there is an interview with Joe Abercrombie and Stephen Pacey, the narrator, which is a really amusing and insightful interview, which is just adds to the overall experience as well. But yeah, in any case, Sharp Ends is a great time because you get short stories that are about characters that you've seen before. So you get to see a glimpse into like some other part of their life or to into something that you've heard about but never actually seen on page. So that's fun, but there's also short stories about characters that are not from familiar to you, that are new characters that are just like showing you kind of a different part of the world or that they might have encountered a character that you that is familiar to you from. Like the, the story isn't about this character that's familiar to you, but these new characters do run across somebody that's familiar to you. So it's just kind of fun to get these snippets from across different times, different places, different people in the world of the first law. And there's some really, truly excellent short stories in here. So I recommend. And I will be doing a review for this in Red Country. That is coming. I'm behind, but those are coming. Next up, I read Guns of the Dawn because Alan made me. And this was by far my favorite of the books that Alan made me read. Again, I'm not going to go in depth, um, but I give this five stars. So you, you did good, Alan. <laughs> I only hated one of them. I, I liked three of them. And one of them I even loved. So... So good job. It, it could go much worse when it's me involved. I, I liked this a great deal and I will tell you more about why when me and Alan discuss it. Second to last, what I read was Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian and I'm not sure if this wrap up is going up first or if my lengthy ranty review is going up first, but needless to say, I hated this book, hence the long ranty review that I have filmed, but I don't know if it's up yet. This book was terrible. From every perspective. Prose was bad. I think the characters were bad. I think the story was bad. And I think that the historical inaccuracies were egregious. Um, the big fat nope from me on this one. And the last book that I read was The Wolf by Leo Carew, which was my fifth time reading it ever and my second time reading it this year. Uh, I think if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know that I'm big, 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 big fan of this book. I do think the sequel is better, but I've only read The Spider once. I, I don't even, why have I read the, the Wolf five times? I keep meaning to then go on and read The Spider or reread The Spider, but I've only read The Spider once. Maybe I'll reread The Spider now. <laughs> Uh, the spider is the better of the two, but the wolf is so good. <laughs> I know not everybody likes it, and I've been emotionally preparing myself for the fact that when Shelf Space picked this book, that not everyone in Shelf Space would like this book. And I did. Except that my baby would be hurted, and I am um, fine with it. It's fine. <laughs> I, I don't know what else I can say about this book that I haven't already said. I love it. It's the perfect book for me. Not the perfect book for everybody, obviously. So if you didn't like it, it's fine. But yeah, uh, five out of five stars as usual. <laughs> Fifth time through, five stars. <laughs> so yeah, those are the 15 books that I read. Oh, I didn't mention my asterisk. So yeah, these are all books that were on my TBR except Dark Age, which is a carryover from June. So that's extra. And then Half Sick of Shadows. Um, I just swapped out my other book. So I was trying to read all my book at the Mind Club books like as they come. And my pick for the month um, 
my June book of the month was The Maidens, so that's what was on my TBR. But I got this as an add-on the same time I got The Maidens, so I just like swapped them because um, I thought I'd rather read Dark Academia in the fall. So I was just like, oh, I'll just switch them out. So it's the same amount of books. I just swapped out a different book of the month. So I think I can still say I completed my TBR. Anyway, yeah, those are all the books that I read in July. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about all the books that I read in July. Um, whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you.